quick video for you today based on a viewer request to learn how I keep my stoves running well and keep them from rusting. If you're interested, keep watching. So I just finished making a video where I was doing a rematch between the Lixata Tower Stove and the Lixata Scout Stove and I thought what well, perfect opportunity to use these two stoves and the pots that I used on them to clean them up just to show you what I do. So I'm going to set these down on my table here and uh, we'll talk about how I go about cleaning them and keeping them in working order. Okay, before we get started, I thought I would just show you the things that I use to clean my stove so that uh, we can get that out of the way. So one thing that you'll need is some type of a paper towel. This is a shop towel, a paper towel just with a little bit more tear resistance. So it's uh, they're nice to have. I do have WD-40. I don't always use WD-40, but uh, it's nice to have sometimes to have a solvent that it will help take some of the material off. Um, in this case, I'm going to be using uh, olive oil, but you can use any mineral oil, any vegetable oil that you want. It's not necessary even to use this type of oil. You can stay with WD-40. I'll explain what I mean by that in a minute. And for some occasions, some steel wool. So uh, those, that's all I really need to maintain my stoves. Let's put the two stoves out of the way because the first things I want to concentrate are on my pots and we'll just talk about those and get that done with. So these are the two kettles I used in the test, the classic GSI stainless steel kettleist and the Pathfinder kettle. And you can see they are black and sooty. <laughs> yeah, and that's, that's what happens when you use them on a stove. You're going to get sooty pots. Now, there's a few ways you can prevent that from happening, but to be honest, I, as you can tell, I really don't care if they get black and dirty looking. Now, I don't want soot getting off on my clothes or my hands and face and uh, in my pack, all of my stuff. So I will remove loose soot, but I am not inclined to take it right back down to the shiny stainless steel. So uh, I'll just point that out right away. However, what if you are, there are ways of maybe help prevent them from getting so dirty in the first place, and I'll share those with you. But I'll, first off, I'll just tell you what it is that I do. So when I mote in the woods, um, I may not always have a paper towel like this, but I may just use moss or sand or just rub it on the earth or, you know, uh, something like that. But to start with, all I really do is just pick the kettle up and wipe off loose soot. You, you know, so you can see there's not a lot on there. So I'll just wipe off the loose soot. Basically, that's it. I'll put that right back in the little stuff sack I have, uh, stuff sack I have for it. And so this one had a bit more on it. And maybe that's one of the key things. One of the reasons why I don't worry too much about having uh, soot on my pots is because I have stuff sacks for them. And that's why it keeps everything organized, keeps my pack clean and uh, yeah, so that's the reason I do that. Now, let's just differentiate between the soot and the resin. These things are coated in resin primarily from the wood that I use in my fires. Uh, it, there is soot, of course, as well, but it's it, the stickiness and what holds the black on is the resin from the wood. That seems to harden over time. It's really hard to get off. So if you don't want to be, take all the work to get it off, don't let it get on in the first place. As you can see, like I said, I don't really care. So what can you do to prevent your pots from getting all blackened like that if it really matters to you? Well, there's a couple things you can do. One is, and I've seen this trick, I've tried it, it does work. It's up to you to try it. A little bit of soap, a little bit of uh, dish soap or something rubbed on the outside. Usually when you take it off the fire and you wipe that off, all the soot comes off with it, at least most of it. So that's one way of doing it. Another way, again, it's not something I do, is to use tin foil between the, the pot and the stove. So you could put some tin foil down. I don't know if I'd recommend this for a wood stove. I haven't tried it. If anybody has, comment whether or not it works. The reason I would be uh, reluctant to do that is I think the tin foil might just start to melt under the heat. But if you take some tin foil, put it under your pot, on top of your stove, then you've got a barrier between the stove and the pot, and that should reduce the, the soot getting through to the pot. Either way, that's uh, a couple of ideas on how to prevent it. However, if you really want to try and keep your, clean, your pots as uh, 
not sooty as possible. It's all about the choices of wood you use in your stoves or over the fires. So a lot of the wood that's available to me are branches, dead branches off of resinous softwood trees like the pines, the firs, the spruces. And when I break those off and use them in my fire, they're going to release a lot of resin and that's what gets stuck to the pots is those resins. If you're using a completely hardwood fire, if as long as it's dry, and that's another key thing is because damp wood will also cause the, the stickiness to uh, appear on the pots. But a hardwood fire produces less resinous smoke. So you get less of this blackening to the pots. You won't eliminate it, but you'll get less of it. And maybe you'll get less soot as well. A good hot fire will also reduce the likelihood of this happening. That's not always controllable, but if you can get a hot fire going and... Uh, put that you know just above the flames of the hot fire but out of the smoke then maybe you'll keep the resin down once again it does nothing for the performance to have them clean in my opinion and I don't mind the look of the stoves like that as long as I'm not getting things dirty with them so all right put those out of the way now the two stoves that I used for that last test were the Luxata Tower Stove and the Luxata Scout Stove. They're both very easy stoves to clean. And I wanted to show you the Scout Stove in use because, or cleaning of the Scout Stove, because when I first got it, this is the, probably the very first stove that I purchased for myself. I think it was four or five years ago. And I did ran into a bit of an issue with it because I wasn't maintaining it as well as I should have. And I'm gonna share that with you now. But uh, yeah, let's put the scout stove aside. There's no real need to do both stoves on camera because the principle is the same. This principle applies to all my stoves. Whether it's the emberlet, which comes apart in pieces, or it's the firebox, which folds down, I do the same thing for them. This one has one additional issue with it, so that's why I'm, I'm glad it's this one I'm showing you. Okay, what you can do is you can do start off doing exactly the same thing. Some areas tend to accumulate soot a little bit more than others, such as the pot stand where the, the smoke will tend to gather a little bit. So I'll wipe off any loose soot to start with. Take the stove apart. The base doesn't tend to get very dirty at all, so I, it's usually not an issue. The burn pan and the other ring. These do get somewhat dirty. You just give a wipe on the inside, see how dirty it is. Yeah, it's a little bit dirty. So clean that down. Same thing for the fire pan. And I see a little bit of residue from what I was using in it last. So you want to get all that out. Now the reason you want to get the residues and the soots out, not just for cleanliness, but they are also spots where moisture can be held against the steel and uh, keep it from drying out quick enough so that uh, you know you can get some rust. And that was the issue I had with this stove, these two pieces right here. I wasn't maintaining it as well as I could and what happened is I started to get surface rust on the outside of the grill plate that goes in the fire pan there. And, it, uh, and the same thing was happening on the inside here. What would happen when I would drop it down is it would get stuck and it wouldn't drop through freely. And I thought maybe it was from warping and maybe there might have been a little bit of warping to go with it. But what I found is, is once I took them apart and removed that rust, and I did that with steel wool, and I think in this case I had to use some wet dry sandpaper, some fine grit wet dry sandpaper, and got it smooth again so all the rust was removed. Same thing with the inside area of this part of the stove. Then they weren't sticking. So now the trick was just to keep them from getting rusty in the first place. So the easiest way to do that was to wipe them down, make sure I got as much of, of the soot off. And then if there was anything that looked like it wasn't coming free, just with a simple wipe, that's where the WD-40 comes in. So I can give a quick spray of, of WD-40. Now, if you're concerned about chemicals on the inside of your stoves and being released by heat when you, when you light the stoves up, then maybe you don't want to be using WD-40. Personally, I don't think it's much of an issue because the heat's going to just get rid of the chemicals very quickly. But the WD-40 is a nice solvent that will loosen up rust and soot and some of the resin as well. And if it's, there's a lot there, you, you just can't wipe it off with a cloth again, that's where the fine grade steel wool. Just rub it on the inside. Same thing I would do for my firebox or my emberlet. Just rub the inside, especially all the contact surfaces of the metal where it's coming together. Same thing on the outside here. Not a lot, doesn't take much. Just quick wipe down. 
rub it all over. I'll do the same thing for the inside, of course. You notice I have some uh, pieces of wood laying out here so I don't <laughs> get this stuff all over the top of my table. There, you can see I, I wiped out quite a bit of, of uh, grime and soot. All right, a little bit shiny. Wipe that out. Yeah, still some coming out as well. That's most of the maintenance done to this stove. That's really all it takes. And if you do this every time you get home, even if you've had a few fires, even if you've just had one fire, if you do this every time, then you're going to avoid any long-term problems with rust. Because what's left behind is a little bit of shiny, thin, slick layer of the WD-40, which is great for preventing rust all by itself. Alternatively, some olive oil or something else. Put a little bit on my cloth. And it doesn't have to be a paper towel. It could be a cloth or a rag, whatever else you have for this. Wipe the inside down with that. Seems to be taking even a little bit more off. Wipe the outside down. Same thing for the fire pan. Inside and outside. Same thing for the pot stand. I didn't WD-40 this, but uh, I can see it's coming shiny again on the inside anyway, so I don't have to use WD-40 on it. Very thin coat. That's all that's left behind. And I can do the same thing for the base. There's still enough on the rag I have here to put a thin coat on the inside outside. Okay. All ready. Ready for me to put away inside the pot that I store it in. And that's all there is to cleaning the stoves. So once again, I would recommend when you get home, wipe them down. I, You may even want to wipe them down with some type of a rag or sand or moss before you even put them away in your pack just to get the surface soot off of them so nothing gets dirty or it, you know, reduce the chances of things getting dirty. Then after that, you can get them home take them out, make sure they're dry, wipe off any, off any loose soot, use a little WD-40 and steel wool if it's necessary, not if it's not necessary, and then finish off with a light coat of some type of an oil, either olive oil or just the WD-40. I'm happy to use either. I prefer the olive oil, not because I think it does a better job or it's safer. It's just that it, I think it gives a, well, maybe it does do a bit of a better job, just giving a nice coating on the outside. Olive oil is nice because it doesn't uh, go bad. It's not going to cause uh, a lot of <laughs> germs or mold or anything on the inside of your fire stove. I should go back to the pot. If I'm going to put anything on the outsides of these, it is going to be olive oil. And same thing with my other pots as well. Reason being is this is somewhere where I really don't want any chemicals to be on the outside of this that may get involved with the contents of the water or whatever else I'm cooking. So those for those, I will use olive oil or, or mineral oil or something like that on the, uh, on the outsides. Okay, that's all there is to maintaining your stoves and your pots. So... Let's wrap the video up. Okay, like I said, just a quick video on how I maintain my stoves and my pots, more specifically my stoves to make sure that they are clean and rust free and ready to go the next time I'm out in the woods. So that's my way of doing it, but I would invite you to share how you go about cleaning your pots and your pans and stoves specifically. If you have anything different from what I've said, I'd be happy to hear from you. Please just put it in the comments section below. You never know, it may be a trick that I can pick up and share with back with everybody else at a later date. But until that happens, get out and explore. Take that path less traveled. It'll make all the difference. Bye for now.